So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a modern geometric pattern, just like what you see right here on my screen. And the cool thing about this particular pattern is it's made entirely of triangles and then combining those triangles together into different shapes. And because of that, it's actually pretty easy to make. So let's just get going. And the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is to build a triangular grid, sort of like what you see right here, which is just a bunch of triangles stacked together. So in order to do that, there's actually a way of very easily making triangles in Illustrator, which is going to the toolbar. And from the toolbar, you wanna to go to the shapes menu, which by default tends to have a rectangle tool in front. So in that rectangle tool, just click hold and then go over while holding your mouse until you see the polygon tool and then select that. And then once the polygon tool is selected from the toolbar, just click once on your screen. And the only thing that matters here is you wanna select three sides. And three sides basically means it's going to create a triangle. So right here, it created a triangle on my screen. I'm just gonna switch over to the black arrow or the selection tool, and then go over to one of these corners while holding shift, and then just drag this to scale to be larger so it's easier to see the triangle. And also, if your triangle doesn't have a stroke, you're going to want to add a stroke because it will make it much more easy to see what we're working with. So go back over to the toolbar. Typically in the front, it's the fill. You know it's the fill because there's no box missing out of the middle. And there's also a stroke, which you can click on, and you can tell it's a stroke because it has a box missing in the middle. Just double click that and change the color to be something else. Sometimes when you change the color in Illustrator of the stroke, it will make it white by default. I don't know why it does that. If it does that, just do it again until you can select a color that is better than white so you can actually see what's going on. And also when you're working on this, it's gonna be very helpful to have your properties window open, which is right here on my screen. If you don't see the properties window on your screen, just go to the top menu under window, and then about two thirds of the way down, there'll be a properties option. If you don't see a checkbox, it means it's not on your screen. So just click that. If there is a checkbox, it's somewhere on your screen. So find it wherever it might be. And then for example, when you highlight over this triangle using the selection tool, it'll automatically make options here that are relevant to the selection. So if you wanna make your stroke larger or smaller, you can do that in the appearance section. So feel free to do that if your stroke was too small for you to see, but it's not really a big deal for the purpose of making this. And also for the very next step, you want your smart guides to be on. And to check to see if your smart guides are on, just go to view in the top menu, about two thirds of the way down, there's smart guides. If you don't see a checkbox next to it, just click it, which will make them show up. Alternatively, control U on a PC or command U is the shortcut for smart guides. And you can tell it's smart guides when you highlight over, for example, a point, like the top point of a triangle. It should say in some color of text, anchor, or if you highlight along the path, it'll say path. And I'll show why this matters in this very, very next step. So while you still have that black arrow or the selection tool selected from your toolbar, you wanna go over to the lower left-hand corner of the triangle to the point that makes up the edge in the lower left-hand corner. And when you highlight over it, it'll say anchor with those smart guides. So then what you wanna do is click and hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac on your keyboard. And while that's held, just click, hold, and drag this off to the right with your mouse. And while you're doing that, just hold Shift so that it stays on a perfect horizontal plane. And keep doing that until you see this intersect option come up in the smart guides. It'll make a cross kind of between these two triangles, which means they're perfectly intersecting right on the points. So the far left and the far right point respectively of these two different triangles. Once it does that, just let go of your mouse and let go of the keyboard. And then you can kind of check out that movement. And while this is still selected, and also just to zoom in and out really fast, if you want to do that as you're working, control minus zooms out on a PC or command minus on a Mac will zoom out. Control plus on a PC will zoom in command plus on a Mac will zoom in. So if you need to zoom in or out, feel free to do so. But while the triangle is still selected, and if you select it off of it for some reason, not a problem, just select it again. You wanna hit control D on a PC or command D on a Mac, which will just duplicate that last movement. So this is a really fast way just to begin to build out a grid until you have as many triangles as you think you're going to need for the grid that you're gonna make. And be mindful that the ones on the very far edges might get cut off a bit because these aren't gonna align absolutely perfectly. So making more than you need is probably a better idea than making not enough. I'm just gonna scale these down a little bit for the next step here. So for the next step, what we're gonna do is actually just duplicate this entire row that we just made. So once again, using that black arrow or the selection tool 
highlight over everything that you just made, and then holding Alt or Option on your keyboard, click, hold, and drag this up. And it doesn't matter if you hold Shift while doing that because the next step kind of makes it irrelevant. But what we're gonna do next is on the middle section here, if you highlight over that little point, it looks like a box on the middle section, It'll bring up a cursor that looks like two arrows on an arc that are probably pointing slightly down if you're doing it on the top one. So just move your cursor to that position, hold shift on your keyboard, and then click and hold with your mouse and start dragging this around to rotate it. And basically we're just reversing the order in which this triangle is shown. So now the point is at the bottom instead of the point being at the top. Alternatively, you can right click or control click if you don't have a second mouse button, go to transform and then reflect. And then if you reflect horizontal, it'll do that flip for you the exact same way, personal preference as to which of the two you happen to prefer. But then what we wanna do while all these triangles are still selected, hover your mouse over while you have that black arrow or the selection tool selected to the furthest left triangle's bottom point, just like it is here on my screen, and then click, hold, and drag that until you basically fit these two shapes together. These will want to snap together while you have smart guides on, so just move it until you can tell it kind of snaps in place and then let go. And this is the very first stage of making this overall pattern. But what we're gonna do next is actually just stack this on top of each other. So we're gonna select over everything that we just did once again. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this slightly better. And then using this point, this anchor point, where these two triangles intersect on the far left side. I'm gonna hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and then click, hold, and drag this up to one of these top points until it intersects. And you can tell this is correct because the top and the bottom of the two different triangles will be touching each other. And then the bases on the farther left of that will also, everything will essentially match up perfectly and almost look like a, a diamond pattern. And you can also tell these are perfectly aligned on top of each other because you'll see a pink line or some colored line from your smart guides going horizontally across this entire thing. So just do this until it does that. Let go of your mouse, let go of your keyboard, and you're good to go. And normally I would have you, for example, just hit Control D a bunch. But if you do that, you can tell it makes this pattern go up to the left or up to the right, depending on how you happen to overlay this. So to prevent that from happening, which actually this is the second time I've made this tutorial because I made that mistake last time without fixing it. I'm just going to highlight over both of these and then selecting the path on the bottom section doesn't really matter where you click. Just click and hold alt or option on your keyboard, click, hold and drag this thing up until it intersects. It should be really easy to see when that happens because your smart guys will let you know. And once that's good to go, just let go of the mouse, let go of the keyboard. And then from this point, you can just hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac to make this grid taller. So that's really all that has to go into making the grid. Also, if you find you want this to be bigger on the horizontal, like the, the length of this overall, you can select everything and then just from the farthest left side, duplicate this over while also holding Alt or Option and kind of combine these together. So like I said, it's good to have too big of a grid than too small of a grid because you can always just remove extra pieces as you continue working forward. And also it might be helpful to even just save this pattern by itself before we do the next step. So what I like to do is just highlight over everything, click and hold alter option and drag a version off to the side, which I can then use this as my working version. And then I can keep this grid that isn't messed up for use later on if I want to. And I'm also going to just copy and paste this triangle that I made previously out of triangles, oddly enough to show the next step. Because now that the grid is in a good spot, the next step is actually really quite easy to do and actually the, the fun and interesting part of making this. And you'll also want your properties window open and sort of easy to see. So I'm gonna have that right here on my screen. But looking at this triangle right here, basically what you do as you make this grid into individual shapes for the pattern is you just select three of these triangles and you select them by clicking on them with the black arrow or selection tool. And then to select multiple at one time, you just hold shift. So click one and then hold shift and then you can click as many as you want while holding shift to select multiples at the same time. And you can either do it vertically, I mean it's at a slight diagonal here, but vertically so to speak, or horizontally if you want to follow a very similar pattern to what I was doing. So in order to recreate this example I have here, I can just do that in real time so you can see how that works. So I'm gonna select this one, this one while holding shift, and this one while holding shift. And then in your properties window, there is a pathfinder section. And the option in the furthest left is called Unite. 
when you highlight over it, which will essentially combine these triangles into a single shape as opposed to individual triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And as you can see, it combined those three different triangles into one shape now. And I can continue doing this for the three to the left here. So I'm clicking and then I'm holding shift as I click multiples, go to Pathfinder, click Unite and combine those together. And then these three top ones will make that final portion of this particular triangle. So I'm clicking those, I'm holding shift and then to the Pathfinder, clicking Unite and it combined those together. So this is like a very basic pattern within a pattern, so to speak, if you wanna make larger triangles based out of these trapezoid shapes within your pattern, you can feel free to do so. But you can also combine multiple shapes together, much more than just three if you want to, or even if you make these larger shapes, and like let's say you want this to be just one big triangle, you can click and then hold shift and click the other ones and then unite those together. So you'll now have one single triangle as opposed to the smaller ones. It's all personal preference in terms of what you think looks the best. And also just a quick, a quick thing to be thoughtful of. If you check out the very tops and bottoms of some of these, you might see individual triangle points sort of sticking out past the pattern, which if you're like me, it might bother you to see that happening. What you can do is just zoom out until you see the entire grid that you made, highlight over the entire thing using the selection tool. And then in the properties window, there'll be a section under appearance that says stroke where you could change the size of the stroke, but if you click on the text that says stroke, it'll bring up an additional menu. And under the corner section of the menu, by default, it probably says miter join, which is the furthest on the left. You wanna click the one in the middle, which says round join. So when I click that with everything selected, and then if I go in here and zoom in really close to these top points, you can see that they no longer stick through because the round join kind of levels off that harsh point. So feel free to do that if you want to. And when it comes to how you color these shapes, totally up to you. I think this personally looks pretty fine if you do just one single color. So I'm gonna highlight over this entire thing, hit I on my keyboard for the eyedropper and just select one of these other colors I used. So in a single color, it actually looks totally fine. And you can continue just going through here and building up the shapes. So if I were to keep building out a pattern of some sort, up to you how you want this pattern to look. I just tend to like following some sort of a rule around how I'm doing this. So it's always three shapes combined together. And then I'm just going through and continuing to sort of follow that, that rule set for myself. So keep building this and just keep going through shape by shape until you get a series of patterns that you happen to like. There's really no distinctive rule or distinctive way of doing this. So it's kind of whatever, whatever looks good to you should be totally fine. And sometimes even if you're a bit irregular on purpose using different rules or different ways of combining these shapes it can look kind of cool but you can go through and do that for the entire section of triangles and as far as the way i went through coloring in case you want an interesting reference point of how to make a color pattern what i did there is kind of set a rule for myself as well where my basic rule was i wanted to use three colors and then make it as best i could that the same colors didn't touch each other multiple times so if i have this color stay this sort of salmony pink color I can make this one the tan. Once again, I'm just selecting each shape by hitting V to bring up a selection tool. And then I hit I on my keyboard to bring up the eyedropper. And then I'm just eyedropping off different shapes. Alternatively, of course, you can go to the toolbar, double click on the fill and change this to be whatever color it is you want it to be. So now we have a very basic color pattern template for this. And in order to kind of follow my rule, so to speak, because I have this darker tan here and a lighter tan here, I want this to stay pink so that we don't have the same color touching each other, at least directly twice. So in this case where we have the darker tan, the pink and no lighter tan in this one, I would turn that into the lighter tan. And when you set up kind of simple rules like that for yourself, a pattern of colors just kind of makes, makes itself over time. It follows that rule fairly well. So it, it makes it a bit easier for me, at least if I have some sort of rule in mind and it might not always work out perfectly or you might not like how that pattern looks, but it's just an interesting way of, of thinking about how you can do this. But that's really it for the basics of how to build patterns using this sort of triangular grid. And the very, very last thing I'm gonna show is, for example, this is a weird shape where you might not want these crazy jaggy edges, which I assume is something you probably wouldn't want. So just for the purpose of showing this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back over to the toolbar 
And then you can use any shape you want to do this step. What we're going to do is make a clippy mask. I'm going to use the rectangle tool because it's pretty straightforward and easy for me to do so. So I'm going to select that rectangle tool. And just to make it easier for me to see how things are aligning, I'm going to click on the stroke in the toolbar. And then in the lower right hand corner, just below where that stroke color is, I'm going to go to the none option. It looks like a white box with a red diagonal line going through it. Clicking that will just remove the stroke. So when you draw the next shape, it won't have a stroke to it. And then I'm gonna draw essentially a rectangle or a square around the overall shape that I want to use the clipping mask on. So I'm just gonna do this on basically the major portion of this entire pattern. So it's chopping off essentially anything that isn't within the shape you draw is what will be cut off. So you can't see it anymore. So just draw whatever shape you want. If you don't like the shape, you can delete it and do a different one. It's up to you. And it can be, like I said, any shape that you wanna use as long as it's closed off. It has, every side is connected in some way. And once you do that, just highlight over everything that you did, including your grid, and then right click. Or if you don't have a second mouse button, control click, and then go to make clipping mask. And that'll just mask off what you did in the shape of whatever shape you made the clipping mask based on. But the reason why you don't want to do this before you actually go through and make your pattern is now if you try to click on any individual shape, you just end up selecting this entire thing because the clipping mask does that to the shape. So if you do that and you want to make changes later on, I'd suggest just right clicking or control clicking to bring up this menu and then click release clipping mask. And then you can just go in and find where the line is for the clipping mask that you made. It'll turn fully transparent. So if it disappears, it's there somewhere. You should be able to click on the line if you remember where it was. And then you can hit backspace or delete to delete that clipping mask if you want to do so. So feel free to go through and make as many changes here as you want and just start coloring these different shapes. And then once you get it to a good point where you feel like it's a good stopping point for your particular pattern, that's when I'd recommend bringing in a clipping mask and doing that final stage or that final step. But that's really it for this video. I won't go through and make this entire thing a pattern because it's just following the exact same rules that I showed you. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. You could even just make a single triangle like this and be like, hey, that's good enough for me. We're good to go here. It's up to you to decide how you want this to visually look. But I do hope this video was helpful. And if this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that it was helpful to you. And also, if you wanna see more stuff like this in the future, consider subscribing. I do my best to keep creating new videos just like this. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.